Hey everybody, Andrew here from Basic Basics, and today we're going to talk about the uh, Hive OS Auto Tuner and uh, the Manual Chip Frequency Tuner. Now, there are a lot of different firmers out there that have auto tuners. Um, I've specifically chosen Hive OS because I like the ability to go in and independently uh, modify a chip on my own, whereas Auto Tune can set uh, the system pretty well from a preset configuration, but the ability to manually tune down to the chip level uh, enables me to get a lot of my boards up and running or hashing at a uh, good efficiency that otherwise I wouldn't be able to have done. So I'm gonna go ahead, it's a little long this time, but uh, it takes that much to explain a lot of what's going on. So I uh, hope you like what you see. And if you've got any questions, as always, hit me up. Um, definitely looking for ideas of uh, what I can put out there and more importantly, what I can research myself as well. So today we're going to go through and run an auto-tune on an L3 Plus. What we've got here, first got it booted up, we're going to go to our minor configuration page. From here you can see the pool information. We go to auto-tuner configuration. All right, so here we have auto-tuner. And essentially what's going to happen is you'll be able to select a hash rate. This is a generic starting point and then it's going to select a voltage. From that point, what it's going to do is it's going to attempt here, 384, 9.32 volts, to set the board to that voltage, and then it's going to run several loop tests, and it's going to check each of the individual ASIC chips for hardware failures. If it's starting to see a hardware error on a specific ASIC, it may tune that frequency down, I believe in factors of six or eight uh, at a time. Now, it can be a very useful process. It can be a very cumbersome process. I've uh, gone both ways on them. A lot of times I will auto-tune it to start, and then I'll manually go in after time and tune each individual chip itself. So, once we've made our decision to hash rate we want, as you can see here, it'll start at 9.841, and this gets you about 610. I prefer to go on the low end, uh, and I'll go ahead because I like to maximize them per circuit so you have another entry about that, but this will basically minimize the wattage and we'll get the best efficiency. So essentially we'll get the best hash rate per watt at this level. So once you get that set, we'll go ahead and save and run. And what it's going to do now is it's going to go ahead and it's going to set each of the hash boards uh, to the 500 or to 384 frequency, 9.32 volts, and reboot the system and then go ahead and run it through a series of hash rate tests looking for those hardware errors. So as you see, it's sitting here and just every 30 seconds it's doing a poll of the hardware status error. So we'll go ahead and take a look where we're sitting. You see it's got the tune running. And we have very few hardware errors, so it's Probably not going to have to do too much to this when we go back. So it may actually, if you're trying to config at a higher speed, it would actually try to uh, potentially drop the voltage or eke up the frequency slightly. Um, fairly well protected what they actually do, but uh, it's a pretty straightforward concept. All right, so now we went ahead and it finished at 9.32 volts, so what it's going to do is it's going to keep with the same frequency, it's going to write a higher voltage value to see if it can run efficiently without any errors or um, large amount of errors, or even small amount of errors at some times. It's in basically taking a stable known working point and tuning it to the point where it's just on the verge of unstable. So we go over to minor status here. And that's basically where you're going to find the most efficiency. Um, we're sitting at 1.39 watts per mega hash. Still sitting right around 500. Been doing it for a minute, no errors. And you can see we've upped the voltage this time to 9.5. So it's going to attempt to run it here, see if it can run without any errors, see if all the chips are running properly. Then it can start scaling it back. Okay, next out of tune we're going to try to run here. Um, we're going to go ahead and start and run for something significantly higher. So we'll go to 560. What this allows to do is, uh, once again, we're going to go up to 9.44 volts, but 
generally at this level, you may start seeing more hardware failures. Um, once again, the faster you go, the higher the percentage of errors you're going to get. Now, that's there's obviously a finite limit that you can run these boards at. Generally, about 610 is about the most mega hash you're going to get out of this while still running efficiently. Every board's different, so that's not necessarily the case for every board, but essentially once you get up to about 475 uh, megahertz in frequency, beyond that you get into that unstable area and you're going to have to crank the voltage up um, basically at 10 volts and above um, in, in order to have the stability so that your no once is under 0.03 percent. All right, we stepped up to run at uh, 740 watts. You can see um, set the config and one of the chains specifically um, it had to increase the voltage slightly. And that's pretty common occurrence when you start stepping up further and further, um, trying to get more mega hash out of each of the boards. Go ahead and look at the status. You can see it's still running, still booting up uh, after resetting that board. Okay, as you can see now, we're hashing again every 30 seconds. It's just checking the hardware error rate that we have. Go check our status again. See, we're actually running 1.35 watts per mega hash, so extremely efficient. We've got the no once though is fairly high. It's because we're starting to see those errors. So what it's going to have to do is starting at that low voltage. So it can either lower the frequency or step up the voltage. So what it's going to do is after running this, usually about five minutes, it'll go ahead and look at the, each individual chip that it's seeing a hardware error on, and it'll go ahead and step that voltage up. Um, generally, it'll do it in about uh, 0.12. So it'll go from 9.32 the next step up generally it'll do is 9.44, but um, I, sometimes it's completely random how much it'll go up. So another thing I like to check, and it's the manual chips frequency config. And this is going to show you what the chips that are specifically having the failures. You have to go here, color chips. We'll do anything greater than five because we haven't had that many errors yet. And what you'll see on this scale of between one to 10 to 20, all the way up greater than 80, you'll see a color. And so we know, hey, this one running at 9.32 volts at 431 hertz is starting to have hardware errors. So essentially the software itself or the firmware itself is going in after it runs five minutes or so. It's looking at each of these and it's going to go ahead automatically and say, well, I'm either going to step up the voltage for the chain or it can go back. And as you can see, it can select any of these frequencies and step it down to try to eliminate a lot of those hardware errors. So a few minutes later, as you can see, chain one, pretty much static with the failures, chain two, chain three, and chain four, you can see there's more popping up. So um, this one, it's a darker shade of gray uh, as this, and then lighter. So just generally means these individual ASICs are starting to see more hardware errors. Now, one of the things to watch for is if you're starting to see an entire chain go, and you'll see it all the way down, and generally that could point to power supply, meaning the LDO, as an issue. Okay, but let's just say we wanted to go ahead and tune these ourselves. So I didn't want to wait for auto-tune. I have a pretty good idea of what I've got going on. So I went ahead and picked 450 megahertz and 9.5 volts. So we're running here a little more than five minutes. You can see I'm having a significant number of hardware errors on chain four. Um, and a few on one and three. Essentially, for only five minutes, it's all unacceptable, but uh, we'll go over that here in a minute. So we're going to go over to our manual chip frequency page. And what we'll do is we can go ahead, we'll color chips with greater than five hardware errors. Now, we can do one of two things. Once again, we can increase the voltage for the entire chain over in our advanced settings. Uh, I, however, would like to run it as lean as I can. So whereas that will globally probably take care of most of our problems, we can also individually go down to the manual chip frequency. By doing that, we'll just select greater than five. Now, what I can do is go to my troublesome chips, and I can decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to scale them down. And essentially what I would do is just go through, and I'm just going to go all the way back down to 384. But you can essentially pick any frequency. If you're just having very light gray over a large period of time, maybe just step it down uh, from 450 just ever so slightly. Let's say just down to 431. 
Um, it's really up to you, but essentially this is how you use the manual chip freak page. You want to set it to color code for greater than five, so it's going to show anyone with greater than five along this scale. If you went ahead and picked something like 20 or 40 or 80, you'll see a lot of them disappear because that chip may not be having 20 errors. But you'll see the ones that were darker gray are still here because these have been seeing a significant amount of hardware errors. So for each of these, we're going to go ahead and bring those back down to the stock frequencies. Okay, we fast forward a little bit uh, after resetting and running for a little bit. Once again, set it for greater than five. As you can see, uh, chain one errors have essentially, hardware errors have gone down significantly, as has chain two, chain three, we have another one pop up, and chain four, the big ones that were dark gray, you can see most of these are gone, um, probably still have some errors, You've, one I missed here, we'll go back to the minor status page, and we've been running for about another five minutes, you see the hash rate's down a little bit, it was at 580 or so. Um, big thing here, we didn't change the voltage, but the frequencies have dropped a little bit, and that's solely because each of those chips are factored in when we lower the frequency to the overall board's frequency. But we're having significant less uh, number of errors. Our nuance is still fairly high, um, but you can see we're starting to bring that down. So what you wind up doing is, I'll run this for another 15, 20 minutes, and we go through all these iterations, and I'll find the next set of chips, I'll lower those frequencies down a little bit, if it's just a few errors, and what I find is, after spending maybe an hour or two uh, on a unit, I actually have better results because I'm able to get more out of it um, than running the auto-tune, because I can choose whether or not I want to run a high frequency, high voltage, high frequency, low voltage, um, versus just having a, a generic, hey, I'm going to run at this stock 740 watt um, profile. So uh, hopefully this helps you guys. Um, any questions, feel free to hit me up. I hope you found this video useful. Please visit ASICBasics.com. Go ahead and subscribe and follow me on YouTube and feel free to hit me up with any questions, comments, or videos or information you'd like to see.